Hello folks and welcome. Zorin OS 17 Core, it's a GNOME desktop. I'm going to be doing a video here for new users, new users. And um, I do highly encourage that you subscribe because this video will definitely be more than 10 minutes. Uh, because I'm going to walk through uh, lots of tips on, uh, well, usage and what's new, new features and some of my old tips also at the same time. You're watching this on Linux for Seniors. Linux for Seniors, you can subscribe if you like by clicking the icon of that person that's floating above the time date. 280 videos and growing. I do encourage that if you do become a subscriber, uh, go check my, uh, my about section about my mission statement and some links in there for you, especially for the file system for Linux if you're learning. Um, I am also going to make a recommendation of subscribing so you can watch this in multiple sessions at your leisure. All right, so I am filming in 1920 by 1080. I can certainly film in 4K, but I thought I'd save you the smaller icons. So you can log into this system in two ways, in the X11 or the Wayland windowing system. I'm using X11 because of the recording software. Uh, you can do that from your login screen. When you click on your user, a tiny little gear will appear down there, almost inconspicuous on your login screen. You can swap between the X11 and window uh, Wayland. Okay. Hopefully you've seen that. Again, welcome. You're watching this on Linux for Seniors, and this is for tips and tricks. Starting with the Zorin, I'll also talk about software recommendations and why I have certain software installed. Okay. So under your accessories, you have clocks, you have your file manager, and one down here on your panel bar, also known as task bar, as in some circles. Text editor, you also have a word processor in a different category. And the uh, weather app has been updated. And uh, I used to live in San Diego many years ago. I don't anymore, but uh, just thought I'd throw that in as an example. Very pleasant looking for weather. And when you do uh, plug in weather information, it'll also become part of your calendar in this section here. Also, the calendar here will have, if you add events <coughs> in your office area, there'll be a calendar thing you can click on to add events. So I have happy holidays for tomorrow there. I'll open that up in a little bit here. So that was the accessories. Now I'll continue by hitting back and go to the next category. Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, which is part of the LibreOffice Suite, and then the Photo App or Program. You can also think about adding other applications or programs similar to Photoshop, and I'll discuss all that when I talk about the software store. Now, go into the Internet category. The only browser you have installed is Firefox. You can add a whole bunch of others in this software store. I added Google Chrome just as an example. Ramina Remote Desktop Tool is not everybody's thing, but that's what I have here also installed by default. Under the Office category, I will open up the calendar right now. I won't show a lot of these uh, tricks uh, but toward the end of the video, when I talk about the file manager, what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this manually. And then I'll talk about these tricks and tips about resizing windows later. You have weeks, months, and year. So if you need to add an event, you click that, plug in the event. And if it's somebody's birthday, don't forget to do the yearly thing. You can certainly uh, import calendars from online accounts like Google Calendar and others. And anytime you add an event here, it becomes part of this section here. You can see on the 24th, I have happy holidays. That's what there, that's where that came from. Okay, so I will pull this down and close that. And again, I'll talk about these features a little bit later. So that was calendar. You also have contacts, evolution, and the LibreOffice suite, which is available not only for Linux, but also for Microsoft Windows and Macs. This is 7.6 that comes with Zorin 17. It is the latest. It not only saves it in regular formats with LibreOffice, but also in Microsoft Windows formats, like Office 365, 2010, and below, as examples. Okay. 
sound and video the only thing I added was Foco so I can do the video I'll start at the top if you are wanting to use a burner software with a physical burner hopefully you have one then you can try this software if you have a webcam maybe that software if you decided to bring in your own music like mp3s you I'll put them in your music folder and then when you open up rhythm box it'll auto populate this and then you can create your playlist very nice tool but you may not like this player you may want others then you head over to the software store you may not like this video player you can also install another one called VLC or something similar Voco screen is what I'm using to record the video and that's what this is okay you have to install that it does not come installed alright so uh, system tools this is GNOME disk utility now when you uh, download Zorin 17 if you're doing this from scratch and you bring it up on your computer live it also has another tool that's in the menu that's called uh, Jeep Hearted. that's used to also partition disks like this tool this tool you don't partition your disk while you're running at least not your booted in drive if you have other drives that's different All right, I'm not going to talk about every single tool on here but uh, software store software store software updater inside the software store is also an updater and you'll also get posted notes the tour does not give you all the information like I am doing here in this video okay so I, I do encourage that a you subscribe B if you don't have the time to sit through this in one sitting as you can watch it in multiple sessions at your leisure again not everything is on the tour the tweaks tool if you have never used it is what I use to activate activate this mouse cursor I installed it manually you also have three other mouse pointers that are already installed but that you can't select them unless you install tweaks I'll talk about that tool later upgrade Zorin OS I'm not part of the development team uh, with Zorin but they offer you the pro version at $48 with other bells and whistles the Windows app support I'm going to click because it opens up the software store and goes directly to the page where you can download the uh, two applications of Wine and Play on Linux I've been around computers for 40 years I've ran everything from Linux to uh, Unix to Solaris to Microsoft Windows and Macs everybody has different pieces of software and let's face it not all of them can be ran on every single computer system but this uh, gives you some of those Windows application supports nothing is perfect and it never is on any system however Linux also offers you a great deal of software great deal of software that was Windows app support Zorin appearance I will open that up in a minute but you can find it here here you can also right click on your panel bar and find it here some people also call it the taskbar okay so down at the bottom the only tool left is the Zorin connect not everybody's thing connects your computer to your mobile device the last category is utilities and uh, another shortcut to GNOME disk utility system monitor and for some of you folks that are more advanced you can also install so uh, software through terminal GNOME tweaks again does not come install I'll talk about the tool later the search feature has been updated so it's very intuitive you just start typing looking for stuff down here I might as well finish this the logout lock restart shutdown Zman or Zorin man is our user for today just a made-up name shortcut to folders software store software store settings here right click on the panel settings right click on your screen settings and click over here settings many ways to get the settings alright let's talk about Zorin settings or Zorin appearance some of you folks may have used Zorin before and maybe some not so much alright so first of all you have different layouts of your desktop these are standard they're four of them if you decided to go with pro you have some other toys and bells and whistles themes you have the dark side and the light side sounds like Star Wars 
you have some accent colors and you have others. You may have seen some of my older videos. I do sometimes different things with these two categories. And there's nothing currently under shell. So the effects section, these two will be off by default. Okay, now I'm going to talk about these. So you may be wondering what this uh, switch between workspaces in 3D. Well, if it's not on, you can't use that tool. When it is on, though, it does have some settings, and I'm not going to cover them in today's video. But there are three sections, and this does have a scroll bar. But if you use the default, I will show this to you. And then I'll show you this next one in a couple seconds. Now, why am I doing this? Because I'm going to open up a couple of things. So I typed in Cal just to give you an example of the search feature. And I'm also going to open up a, an application just to demo two things at once. So calculator, calendar, LibreOffice Calc, and then it's got other search things in here. So it's a very um, interesting search tool. I'm going to pick calculator. Then I'm going to pick another tool under graphics, photos. These are the ones I imported myself. And the reason I'm picking this is because this is a dark window versus these two are light windows. And you'll see why I'm going to do this in a minute. These are not uh, with your system. These are my images that I brought in. So I'm, I have this activated, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about my system and maybe what you have. Mine is a tower computer, wireless keyboard that has a start button on it, normally found in between the control and alt keys. Some people call it a super key or a windows key. I'm also using a standard computer mouse. If you don't have that start button, then you can click this. I'm going to click and rotate that so you can see that 3D effect. And no, you're not imagining things. There are tiny little boxes like a grid. So if you do have that start key, Windows key, then you can push down on it and do the same effect. So that's another workspace. Okay, And I'm going to press that again and rotate it backwards. Again, you can see a weird looking effect on this. Okay. So. The other thing is if you do have that super key, start key, windows key, is you can double tap on it. And then it brings up this. There are two pages worth of applications here. Just some tips for you. A lot of them you won't find just by you know poking around. But anyways, wanted to give you that effect. Now this one is easy to explain and I'm going to leave the windows up for a reason. Is alt and tab. I'm going to need to turn it on though to demo this. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key and hit the tab repeatedly to cycle through open programs, including my recording software. And I'm up to 13 minutes. I can actually see it. OK, so that's the window switcher. Again, you need to have that turned on. Moving to the next segment, um, you also have advanced window tiling, which you can activate. And there will be some extra settings in here and keyboard bindings. All right, so I'm going to talk about the top first, which is switching these two buttons in this case, or three buttons in the other cases. There are three buttons here. I know this is dark. And this is light. One of the reasons I brought these two screens up is because I wanted to demo that for you. So I don't know what the best place to do this with, but I'll just superimpose these if you don't mind. And as soon as I click that, it'll move these two over to here, these three over to here, and these three over to here. Okay, that's all done right now. This uh, tool is also found in the tool that I installed called Tweaks. I will talk about this in detail, or at least a couple of things. But more importantly, I can do the same here. I just moved the buttons back using this tool. I'm going to come back to appearance a little bit later. That's how I switched that mouse cursor or pointer. And there's a couple of more that are already installed that you can activate also. I'll cover that a little bit later. So I'm done with the, the buttons part. So I'm going to drag this window in the center. And uh, again, you need to turn on this if you want advanced window tiling. If you don't, leave it off. The task bar. We have different names for things, right? Like this is mouse pointer, mouse cursor. You'll hear me use those words quite frequently. 
and we have users all over planet Earth watching this video. And sometimes that's why I go slower, because we have a lot of people that don't speak English, but they're trying to pick up on the things that I'm doing. English is also my second language. More importantly, taskbar settings, panel bar, panel. A lot of people have different names for this. We have a couple of things we can play with when it comes down to the taskbar or panel. We have style. You can turn these on and off with a gearbox and position. What would you think my recommendation would be if you alter any of this? Well, if you've been watching any of my videos over the years, I recommend screenshots. You can find that tool right in here. Selection, screen, window. You heard a funny noise. It gets saved right in this pictures directory in screenshots. So yes, I just made a screenshot of that. Now you can see what that box looks like in a thumbnail format. I'll come back to the file manager later. All right, so in either case, we have lots of selections. So you want the panel on the bottom, that's default, or the top, not default. But some people may prefer this mode. You may want to do the left side or the right side. The panel thickness, the task bar or panel bar or panel thickness is defaulted to 48. That would be this guy. It makes everything smaller now. Why would you think I would want to go down here? That all depends on my screen resolution. My monitor is 43 inches. I don't know what yours is, but maybe you're running a 640 by 480 and that's plenty big. It all depends on your screen res. Okay, so panel thickness. 48 is default, by the way, and it even says so. You can go in between. That's 81, if you can't read that. This is jumbo, is what I call that, 96. These are very big. These are very small. The panel length, the taskbar length, the panel bar, you can also reduce. Now, if you do something like that, this is probably not acceptable. But choose wisely. You can certainly reduce some of that. And now I have a little bit of real estate to put extra icons. A little bit of room. I'll go full. All of these are choices, as one would say. Again, screenshots are recommended. Behavior, action, style, and close. Task bar settings. Right click on the task bar, task bar settings. Two different ways to go into your areas. Okay. You also have regular settings in here and some other tools. Software time, hamburger menu. It's just call software 45.2. Are you fairly new to Linux? You may not be familiar with that terminology. Software, let me open this again, sorry. Software repositories. It just means where's the stuff coming from. If you're from the Microsoft Windows world, for instance. I'm going to make this larger. So that's where the stuff's coming from, the ones with the blue check marks, except it does not list Flatpak software in here. Okay, I will show you that this does contain Flatpak software. So we have lots of ways of looking at this. We also do have the updater here, and you can also cycle this to go check immediately. You also have installed, and if you don't like something, you can certainly hit the trash can. All right, let's go to Explore. We can either do searches. VLC is a, an Apple a media player that you can install, and you can find these on mobile devices. Uh, in this menu, I have two selections. If I click the Zorin package, different screenshot, and also different selections. Wow. So flathub.org is an actual website you can click on. It, uh, I believe it has over 30 different Linux distributions that use that. So what is Flatpak software? It's self-contained. It has all the goodies that it needs to work, whether it's a VLC or others. You'll see that quite often on some of that stuff. Then you have Snap and you have Zorn. 
if you want a full definition, my suggestion is a web browser because I'm really not going to cover all that material today. All right, so we can do the explore thing. We can do it by category also. Just be patient and allow this to populate. And if you see anything with circles on them, green circles, that means it's installed. Example of that one. So I can do the trash can thing if I want to, if I don't like this. So um, do we know what that is? Some of you folks don't, and some of you folks do. There's also extra information downstairs. So this is GIMP. I've been using GIMP for many years. This is not my first YouTube channel. I have made over 700 videos on YouTube in the past five or six years. Linux for Seniors is my latest channel with 280 videos. Every one of those, I edit the thumbnails with this application or program. I also resize images, convert images, and also make icons. I have a current video on my YouTube site, which you can go find on GIMP, how to take a photograph and make it into an icon with rounded edges, similar to these things down here, if you'd like to view that video. Now, one of the reasons that I brought you in here is this is a very nice program or application to resize images and also you can use it to color things and edit things. There's all kinds of tools in here. The other reason is to show you this. So you also have different selections when you're looking at software. If it has a down arrow, click it. That one's coming from flathub.org. Secure channel. Snap packages or the Zorn package. Okay, different things to think about. Categories, editors, choice. Some things only have two selections, some things may be one, but we all have all kinds of software we can uh, install. Don't forget the bottom end, you have some fonts downstairs. Only the ones with the green check marks are installed. There's lots of stuff in here. You can be into a lot of different things. You can also find the tweak tool in here, which I'll now open as soon as I show it to you. Not two, T-W-E. So it's T-W-E-K-S, tweaks. Some of you folks know what this tool does and some not so much. I'm going to open it from here. You normally will open it from your main menu from Zorin, but you can also open stuff in here after it's installed. It only has the Zorn package currently. And uh, I will open this tool up now. I showed you this earlier where I actually turn these uh, toolbars from one side to the other. You can also turn these off. And on some GNOME desktops, these will be off by default. How would you resize a window with those off? Well, actually like this is one way. I'm clicking and holding, dragging to the top or pulling it down, also double clicking. I've shown these tips many times and I'm sure my subscribers are probably tired of hearing about some of these, but unfortunately, I never know when I have a new viewer and that's why I rehash a lot of this stuff. I'll turn them back on. At least Zorin turns these on for you for convenience purposes. Now let me talk about appearance. This is how I activated, activated this mouse cursor. Not installed, activate. They are installed. This one is installed in dot icons. It's in a, in my file manager. I'll show it to you right now. Control H. I made this folder and I threw radioactive in here and also night diamond red. So there's only two installed in this dot icons or period icons, which is a hidden folder. So you're probably going, well, there's more stuff here. Yes. These are installed in USR share icons. There's only two places. All mouse cursors are installed on all Linux distros. I have lots of videos on this. Anyways, this is your default. Some of these are resizable, some maybe not so much. Your resizer are done in settings, not the tweak tool. It's done under the accessibility options here. This one is resizable because it actually changes sizes. You will find that if you install some cursors, sometimes they won't resize. Okay, so I'm using the larger, not the largest. I'm not using jumbo. Okay, that's your default. However, you do have handhelds and it may look too tiny for you right now, but if you're running a 640 by 480, this will look very big. You also have red glass 
it has a, a shadow or another it looks like it's a 3d effect a shadow or, or I, I don't know what you want to call that but anyways and you also have white glass these are already installed they're sitting in your USR share icons folder you just need tweaks to activate them. You, you can't activate these unless you put in tweaks. There's no setting in here. Not currently. Maybe later. All right. On some Linux distributions, you don't need tweaks to do this with. They'll have settings like an XFCE desktop will actually be in your mouse and touchpad properties, which you can activate these after you install them. But in this GNOME desktop, you need tweaks to activate these. So these are installed in my US, uh, sorry, these are installed in dot icons. The Night Diamond Red and the Radioactive were the only two installed in my file manager under dot icons. The rest of these are in US or share icons. I don't want to confuse you, but I'm just telling you this is your default. And But you do have this one, the white glass, and the little tiny guy here. Okay? You don't have to install them, but you need tweaks to activate them. I'll go back to my yellow one. And what do I recommend anytime you're doing this kind of stuff? At least log in and out or do a restart anytime you change your pointer, your mouse cursor, your mouse pointer. I'm really not going to go through every single setting. Okay, but that's GNOME Tweaks. This is the reason I installed it because of this yellow pointer. Now you can see where that um, my mouse pointer is pointing to this line. That line represents the top of the window so I can double click instead of using that button. File manager time. Okay. So control H shows your, your hidden files and folders. So this is just called files. Another name for this is Nautilus. And um, you have keyboard shortcuts, three pages worth. The one I just showed you a couple of minutes ago is show hidden files and folders. So that would be control H. You can watch my videos on how to put these kind of mouse cursors. They're installed normally here or in a subfolder in here. There's multiple folders underneath this one. Okay. Control H. Resizing icons on the fly, holding the control key down while scrolling with your computer mouse. I have a standard computer mouse, as I pointed out earlier does come in handy when you're in pictures. Small to large, you can certainly do this the old fashioned way, either click or hold down the control key and hit plus plus or minus minus. But you can also hold down the control key and scroll with your computer mouse scroll wheel. You can click and hit the space bar to get a preview. Also click in here to go full screen, space bar to close because there's no window for that. This one you do have an X in the corner, but if I go full screen, there's no X in the corner. Space bar to close, space bar to open, space bar to close. I'm just giving you a preview. You can certainly also set these as wallpaper. If you have digital information, I'll just give you a preview of that. That is Yosemite, California. And if I right click and do properties, it does have image info taken with an Apple iPhone 6 in 2017. The coordinates are 37 degrees north by 119 west. Just to give you that example, that got imported. Op aperture, ISO, and all that good stuff. Set as wallpaper, so digital images of your kids, your grandkids, your friends, your pets, whatever it might be. Again, the screenshot tool puts this folder in there for you. Okay. Now, I can either hit the space bar and open this with Image Viewer, or I can double click. So Image Viewer has presets for zooms, 33 to 2,000%. And you can also click the plus or minus. You can also hold down a hidden feature, hold down your Alt key, and scroll backwards with your computer mouse. This will go well below 33%. It's now at 2%. Probably unnecessary, but I thought I'd at least point it to you. And then when you scroll up past 100%, and let's say if I'm in this mode, but I want to center that mushroom, I let go of the Alt key, click and drag and center it. Just one tip for you there. PDFs, it doesn't matter which one I pick on. I'll use the camera one today. And uh, holding down the Control key, not the Alt key, 
while scrolling in and out. Once you get it to this size, let go of the control key, scroll down a couple of pages. If you want to zoom in on this, put your mouse pointer where it's at, hold down the control key and scroll forward. If you need to center that, then of course you can do it this way. You can also double click on this imaginary bar to resize the image instead of clicking that. Uh, not the image, the box, the window. You can also click and hold and pull it down and it'll resize to the last resize. I normally don't like this feature, so I normally manually do this. In other words, grab the edge and pull. Holding down the control key, scrolling back and forth. All right. I'm going to also use Alt and F4 to close that window. Alt and F4 closes windows. If you're on a laptop, it may be function Alt F4 because your F1 through 12s are sometimes pre-assigned on laptops. Okay, so I will use Alt and F4 and say thank you for watching.